What's up, Homestead homies? It's Off Good with Doug and Stacy. I'm Doug. And today's just another daily vlog about what's going on in the homestead. Um, you guys wanted to kind of see these daily things. Last week we posted them every single day. We missed one day this uh, last week because of the um, Baker's Creek Spring Planting Festival. <laughs> I don't know why I've had such a hard time with that one. So uh, we did miss Monday because we were coming back and then I had to make the videos and put them up. Uh, but this this last week you see we have videos every day. We're going to just keep trying to bring you guys videos every day on the homestead. Today uh, we're going to try to continue on with burning the hay uh, that was left over from the sheep. Sheep and goats uh, waste a lot of hay. Horses pretty much do too. Um, it's just it's just part of you know business. I mean it's the cost of doing business. Um, you can try to rig up ways to um, cut back on that, but ultimately, I mean, they, they're just going to waste it. So I like to rake that up and burn it so I don't have any weed seeds around. I don't like to put it in the compost. Um, you, that, you might do it that way. This is how we do it here. Then what I do is that area that they spread it all out is dead now. So I spread out the ashes and then the ashes create new growth and then, you know, the cycle continues. So that's the way we do it here. We're going to fix some blackberry issues that I have uh, with... Um, uh, getting them up. Uh, we're gonna, you know, just try to do a few things. I don't know if I'll be able to burn today again because it's really windy out. It's an absolute gorgeous day in the Midwest, um, so that's going good uh, news for us uh, going for us. Um, also, we have a visitor coming next Thursday uh, that we're really excited about. We're gonna keep you guys informed. Stay tuned for that. That'll be pretty neat. And um, that's it. One tip I'm going to give you right now for aging in place, okay? Uh, aging in place and starting your homestead. You get a, a two for tipper right here before the show even starts. One, if you're um, starting your homestead, try to plant all your uh, fruiting uh, stuff, you know, as quick as you can. Your apple trees, your blackberries, your blueberries, your mulberries, your elderberries, all that kind of stuff. Um, plant it as soon as you can because it takes a little bit of time for the roots to establish and for it to really start producing fruit, okay? And I'm speaking from experience. We did put in some blackberries. Uh, we waited like two years or so to put in apple trees. You know, so I'm just encouraging you um, to learn from our mistakes and try to put those things in sooner rather than later. Um, and that you'll greatly benefit from that. Okay. Now my other hot tip is um, aging in place. When you uh, put your apple trees and your blackberries and your blueberries and your elderberries and your mulberries, when you put all that stuff out, keep it kind of close to the house, as close as you can. If you have 11 acres or 10 acres or five acres, you don't want to be going an acre away to tend to your um, fruiting uh, vegetation, okay, because you'll be competing with birds, squirrels, rabbits. So you want to uh, make sure you keep that in mind. Also, because the older that you get, um, you want to make it more convenient, okay? I know right now, uh, you know, you're all full of uh, vigor and, and it's no problem, but as you age in place, uh, you just want to keep in mind these conveniences so you can uh, work uh, simple and smart and not as hard, okay? So we're going to start the show right now. First project we're going to do on the homestead today uh, in the wind. So if you're hearing wind on the microphone, I, you know, I just do the best that I can and hopefully it's uh, not uh, too bad. So I put in these uh, posts to hold up the blackberries and then I put in some wire here. And what the problem that we're having is that the wire is getting loose. That post down at the end isn't staying as sturdy as this one is. That's why I always recommend putting in rock in your hole or concrete. I think I put a little bit of rock in there, but not enough. And then I put some dirt in there. I figured it would hold, uh, but it's not. So I'm gonna, I'll probably leave this one in because I like the firmness of it. I'm gonna take this wire all off and I'm gonna reuse this wire again in future projects. And I'm gonna put in some T-posts and a cattle panel. The tried true method of, um, you know, trellising or holding up any of your, uh, plants that need a little help okay so I'm gonna get busy doing that we'll cut back in with you as we show our progress um, so stay tuned down all that mess I left this post in because it's still in pretty good and I put my T post in one right there one at the end and a little one there to kind of support it and then I tied my blackberries um, up to the cattle panel which I should have done in the first place uh, but we were just trying something that we had on hand and uh, so I robbed this cattle panel from the back where the sheep have a separation So now I have to go make some repairs on the fence back there 
that I was putting off and then I'll be moving the sheep from over there to over here so we can get busy at the alpaca house area for putting together the uh, burning the hay that they wasted so we can get that out of here before it starts creating seeds and weeds and all kinds of craziness all right so we'll check you guys in a second All right, so we're deep in the forest of the off-grid homestead. This is my neighbor's fence. I would never claim this fence, but it's his fence. Now, there's a rule of thumb um, in the country, if you live in a homestead in the country, is that if a fence needs to be repaired, the property owners split the cost, okay? So he'll pay for the left side, and I'll pay for the right side down the middle, okay? So basically, that's how you do it. So I've been talking with him and it's about time he's going to uh, uh, pay for the materials of his part. I think he's gonna pay a little bit more because I'm gonna do all the labor and then I'm gonna come in and clear off an area through here because as you can see, he's got trees growing up by here and every other kind of thing. And then I'm gonna repair this fence back here. But for now, because it's his fence, I'm just doing these little dog hole repairs, okay? So like this area right here has uh, uh, been cut away uh, probably before we lived here, there were some hunters that used to sneak on this land and they would hunt deer here, but now that we've moved here, they can't. So there's a couple spots where you can see it was compromised by human activity. And so I'm gonna get this straightened up because I'm bringing the sheep back over here on this side and I'm gonna let them graze in this wooded area as well. So what we're gonna do is we're taking a cattle panel, or not a cattle panel, but a piece of the uh, woven wire fence um, that I used in, uh, the other areas, I will link a video um, right here about the woven wire fence. And basically, I just connect it here to where this hole is, and then that'll keep them from going uh, from going through the fence. One thing about um, your animals is that you always have to watch your fencing because if your livestock get out, let's say you have a cow and your cow gets out and somebody hits it on the road, you're responsible for that action. You know what I'm saying? So keeping your fence in good shape is always a must on the homestead. I was able to utilize a lot of that wire from the last uh, fix up at the Blackberries uh, on that same project, uh, you know, securing the cattle panel to the T-post. So you can always recycle on the homestead um, material several different times. And actually that wire I got for free, that was electric fence wire that a neighbor took down and didn't want anymore, so I got a whole spool of it to use. finish getting this secured up and then I'm going to show you another spot that I have trouble with that we're going to fix real quick. Real quick too. Alright, real quick, I want to talk about um, water gaps, okay? Because this is the creek that runs from where you saw me do my last fence repair. I'll link the video up right there. Um, you'll, the last video that you saw me do that fence repair because the lamb was getting out. This creek comes on down here and then it goes through here to the neighbor's property, okay? Now this is also a water gap. Okay, and I'll just tell you, I'm not fond of the tin roofing water gap system, okay? What it's designed to do is just kind of flap open uh, as the water flows, and um, you know, I don't like it, because stuff gets stuck in there, like you can see right there, there's a compromising spot right there where they could go through if they wanted to. So I don't really care for this system too much. It's much better to have a cattle panel cut to fit the banks of the pond and then uh, put in there and then even maybe run one t-post down in the water and then tie it to that and leave it alone um, a lot of times guys will use the cattle panels and they'll uh, you know they'll just let them kind of swing as well 
but when they do swing they come right back this swings here and it gets caught now granted it has gotten a little loose over time probably but i'm just not really a fan of this type of a water gap system so in the future we'll probably uh when when i talk to the neighbor be replacing this water gap system and then i told you guys before in a previous video we have a couple of other water gaps on the property that we're going to be addressing so they can be a lot more secure um, for our livestock the water gap that i just showed you with the 10 uh the corrugated 10 as the water gap so what I found was that the sheep were getting out and then uh, so I had to track down where they were getting out. So one thing you guys will want to do if you're having a problem with your animal getting off the homestead is to uh, check your fencing everywhere and then look for tall tail signs. Right here you can see on these barbs and this wire here where the sheep are going underneath this little area right here to escape to the neighbor's side and then they were actually working down the forest uh, to the other water gap and then coming back through the property and ending up out on our horse pasture. So I got some of the uh, woven wire again. I also have welded wire, but I try not to use that. I just brought it along in case I didn't have enough. And I'm gonna put the woven wire over this area here. And then that'll this will stop them from uh, from getting out. Now, of course, at first, you know, I tried the... Uh, <laughs> I tried the stick method, I put a bunch of sticks here, but they obviously just pushed them down and actually made their way out. So, you know, uh, sometimes you're a little lazy on the homestead, you know, it's just kind of human nature, but um, I will tell you that, you know, if you, if you do things haphazardly, it'll come back and get you anyway. So they eventually got out anyways. So it's best I just go ahead and get this fixed up. I'm gonna turn them loose in here in a minute and uh, we'll, we'll see some more Doug uh, and, the, and the sheep herding system. But pretty simple here. I'm just going to tie onto the existing fence uh, that's already here. And we'll be in good shape. This panel's plenty big. I won't need to use the welded wire. I really try not to use that as, uh, if I can. All right, so I'm going to give you guys another tip. These are Klein tools. Uh, they're kind of used for the electric line guys, you know, if you're in, uh, working in electric or anything. This is an invaluable um fencing tool okay you can get them at your local hardware store um it's got a cutter right here flat heads right here so you can use it for the wire and then uh like you're seeing me doing with these repairs i'm just um taking the wire wrapping it around what i'm fastening it to bringing it through the wire here grabbing the end trying to get it as tight as i can then i do a twist like that then I cut the wire here and then you just grab your pliers like this and then you just turn that and that'll get it nice and tight. So there's your little tip right there. They're just Klein tools. Really good, uh, really good thing to have on the homestead. Now there's, they do make a dedicated pair of um, like uh, pliers for fencing, but I find that I use these far more than I do uh, the dedicated pair, but they do come in handy as well. All right, I'm going to throw a couple more pieces of uh, security on here, and then we'll go back up front and move the sheep over to the uh, to their other pasture. Catch you in a minute. Heard some sheep. It's off good with Doug and Stacy. Uh, we're gonna move over to the uh, alpaca house. Try to get some hay 
piled up. I don't know if we'll be able to burn today, but we'll see where we go. Hang on. <laughs> All right, guys, so it's really windy out here. Uh, so I'll probably just get a couple more piles lined up. I'm not gonna do any burning today. And uh, I'll check back with you guys in a minute. <laughs> we'll probably just end this video, so. Just wanted to give you an idea about uh, what was going on over here, kind of show you. I'm going to probably get several piles together and uh, get this stuff burned, but not today because it's way too windy. So, all right, we'll see you in a second. That was it pretty much for outside work. Uh, I've got my piles uh, piled up over here a little bit um, better uh, to stage them for the burn, which I might be able to do tomorrow. Depends on how much wind we got going on. And I will say that, uh, man, you guys, you guys are keeping me motivated. If I'm trying to make these daily vlogs, I am, uh, I'm definitely on the go now. <laughs> All right. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, you know, they're going to range probably anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes. Um, hopefully you glean a little information out of them. This is off good with Doug and Stacy. I'm Doug, and we'll see you guys on the next episode.